Hello, good morning. I'm sorry about the technical difficulties this morning, but we are very happy to have you here on Faces and Places across the United States. My name is Sandra and I'll be your host today. Today I'll be talking to our guest, Amina. Hi, Amina. Hi, how are you doing, Sandra? Good, it's great to have you here. Thanks again for being with us today. And you are joining us from New Hampshire, is that correct? Yes, yes I am. Okay, so thank you again for being here. And before we start, we wanna ask all our audience members to please put in the chat box, where are they joining us from? So we can greet you and say hello throughout the session. So New Hampshire, I think we had a map, I'm not sure we can show it, um, but we had it up in the top. So it's up in the north of the United States. Okay, I think it's coming. Okay, so you are joining us from New Hampshire, but tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? Well, I'm originally from Connecticut, uh, which is a little bit south of New Hampshire, but still in New England. And I went to university in South Carolina and lived there for a long time. Uh, then I spent a year in Korea, and then after that, I lived in Portland, Oregon, all the way on the West Coast. And then for the past two years, I've been living in Uzbekistan. And now I'm in New Hampshire. Wow, you have traveled a lot and you have been in a lot of different places. That's wonderful. So you have a lot of stories um, to share with us today. So um, how's the weather there today? Actually, I found out this morning that maybe we're having a hurricane this afternoon. Uh, it's been very hot and humid, which when people usually think of New Hampshire, they think of cold and snow, but the summers are pretty hot and humid. I woke up today to find it kind of cool, but humid. And yeah, we're expecting a lot of rain and possible thunderstorms this afternoon. Well, here in DC, we already had a little bit of that. So here in Washington, temperature is warm, um, not as hot as it was before, but it was definitely very rainy and stormy. So good luck to you there. So we have a few people saying hello. Uh, we have, let me see, we have um, Teresa from Peru saying hello. We have Livia from Medan, North Sumatra, Indonesia saying hello. We have Noel Guevara from El Salvador saying hello. We have Nuria Borrell from Catalonia saying hello this morning. Um, we have Noel Guevara from El Salvador. We have Siti Marif from Indonesia. And we have Omar Farouk from Turkey. Where it's 6 p.m. right now. And we have Eduardo saying hello. We have um, also Soad Salim Salim from Libya. So, you see, Mina, we have people from all over the world this morning. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, Hi. so um, I wanted to say thank you to some people who had submitted some questions and some comments. We have um, uh, ESL GED Learning New Mexico saying my aunt and uncle lived in New Hampshire and in a very small village called Etna. And we have Fabrizio who has said that, um, I asked, what do you know about New Hampshire? And they said it's the granite. State. Do you know why it's called a granite state? I guess they used to, or maybe they still um, mine a lot of granite here. It's got lots of big stone. Very, yeah, I think that's true. And also Fabrizio knows that Concord is the capital city. Uh, we have Young Lin saying uh, that, that that has been here and that the neighbor is Massachusetts. That is correct. And we have Shadi saying um, that has heard that a lot of people a lot of the New Hampshire is wonderful and a great place to live here, to live there. And we have a few people who are watching us. We have Changing My Life Through English, Promoting Faces and Places. We have the American Corner in Vesprem, Promoting Faces and Places, and also the Instituto Chileno Norteamericano Antofagasta. So, okay, let's get started today. We have a lot of fun things to talk about and, um, Will you share with me that you had a cross-country trip? So cross-country trips are very popular in the United States. People enjoy driving around to visit cultural sites and national parks. So how did you decide to do a cross-country trip? 
It was a lot of different things. Uh, so I mentioned that we lived in Portland, Oregon before, but when I arrived back from Uzbekistan, I was on the East Coast, Massachusetts. So I had to get out to Portland to get my things. And because of COVID, we didn't really want to fly again. Just it's not really a good situation. And then also my husband and I were thinking, well, you know, what are we going to do with our summer? What should we do? And so we thought it would be a good idea to drive to Portland. And his parents have a, a van, which we converted so that we can sleep in it and cook in it. So it's kind of like a little house. And so we first drove out to Michigan to visit them and then we headed west. And I think we have a picture of you and your husband in the van. Let's see if we can get it um, on the screen for people to see. And also the map. Oh, there it is. So we have <laughs> a picture of the van that converted into also your house for a few days, huh? Yes, yes. Uh, we call it van life. If anybody's interested, you can go on YouTube or Instagram and see tons of pictures and videos. Our van is pretty small, but um, some people even have like little bathrooms on their van. Obviously we couldn't fit one on ours, but it was pretty comfortable. Wow, yes. And if we go back one back, I think we have the map that shows the route that you took. Yes, that's it. Wow, so there were a lot of great things that probably happened during this trip. Um, but can you share with us the most memorable experience that you had? Yeah, it's a pretty strange one. We saw a lot of amazing things, um, just beautiful places, really lots of nice people. And then of course we saw a lot of interesting animals as well, um, traveling through the national parks. But the most memorable by far was um, one morning we were in Idaho. We were kind of in the middle of nowhere in a forest. And my husband um, was looking a little sad and he said, I thought we would have seen some wildlife here. And just at that moment, I looked past his shoulder and across this little river was a llama or an alpaca just drinking some water, eating some grass. In this picture, this one has a harness. This one did not. It just looked like a wild animal. But the thing is, in North America, we do not have llamas and alpacas as native animals. So I don't know why it was there. Maybe it escaped from a farm or some people do um, hiking with these animals. So maybe it escaped. I don't know. It, it was the strangest thing. It looked at us, it drank some water, and then it just kind of walked on. That is really strange. So something that you did not expect <laughs> no. your trip. You were expecting to see buffalo, which I think you shared some pictures with us of buffalo um, and other wildlife, um, but not a llama in the no. middle of a national park no. in the United States. Yeah, llamas are not from the United States. So that's interesting. That's really, really fun. Okay, so you visited so many great places, but tell me which one was your favorite national park? It's hard to pick and each one had something special about it, but I would probably say the Badlands was my favorite because it was the first one that we entered on our trip. Um, it was the first place where I saw buffalo. They were the closest. They were standing on the side of the road. We had to stop so they could cross the street. Uh, we saw prairie dogs everywhere. We saw antelope. I even saw a rattlesnake. That was a little scary. Um, and, but also it's just a beautiful park. It, it starts out with these really beautiful mountainous rocky structures you can see the different layers of earth in there. And then as you drive past them, it just becomes this rolling grasslands, um, just really peaceful and quiet. And this just amazing sky and clouds and the colors, it, it was spectacular. And it just looks so beautiful. Look at all the different colors. Wow, that is pretty amazing. And um, that you got to see buffalo too, that is pretty cool yeah. as well. I think we have some pictures that you were pretty close to them. <laughs> yes, um, you have to be a little careful because they can be violent if they get frightened. Actually, we kept seeing videos on YouTube of people in the parks where we were being attacked. Um, luckily, we, were, we never had a situation like that, but um, 
yes, sometimes you can't avoid it if you're driving in the car and one just comes into the road, all you can do is stop and wait and hope that it doesn't get scared or angry. Yes, yes. So I want to remind everybody uh, that if you're just joining us, we are talking to Mina, who is currently in New Hampshire, but she took a really long road trip of 6,500 miles across the United States. So we are asking her some questions about her experience. So what do you think is the most difficult thing about touring um, by car in the United States? So I think it's just, um, well, trying to not spend too much time in the car, I think is one, because you're trying to get somewhere. But if you spend hours and hours in the car, then um, that's no fun. And also remembering to try to, to take time out um, during the day um, to do things. Sometimes we were thinking we want to get to a certain point but then we're missing all these beautiful opportunities. So that was something to balance. And then also, because we were doing van life, um, making sure we had a good spot to sleep at night. The nice thing about the van is really we could sleep anywhere, but we're trying to always enjoy nature. Um, so finding somewhere by like a nice river or in the forest. So sometimes that could be a little difficult finding just the right spot. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna ask you how many hours a day do you usually travel? We usually didn't travel more than four. Um, and sometimes we just traveled a couple hours and then there were a couple days we just stayed in the national park area. Um, but yeah, usually, like I know that you could drive from Michigan to Portland in probably three or four days, but we took two weeks to do it. We really took our time. Wow, yeah, it looks like uh, you might need some breaks in between. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we have a few questions um, for you before I go into the questions from the audience. Let's see. So um, have, have you visited all the 50 states in the United States? Not quite. I have been to 38 of them. Um, a couple of them I don't remember because I was a baby when I was there. Um, but I know for sure I've never been to Hawaii or Alaska. And then there's some states in the south. Um, such as New Mexico, Texas, Arkansas, those states. Um, I haven't been to them, but I think that I've done 38 so far, so I think I'm on track to do all 50 eventually. Yeah, that would be fun. That would be fun to check off every state. Okay, <laughs> we have a few questions from uh, Daniel Montano. He, uh, um, he asked um, if you know, he said that he would like to travel to Mount Rushmore. And I think you did visit Mount Rushmore and we had a picture that you took and I wanted to ask you about your experience. What is it like when you actually are there and you see Mount Rushmore, um, which is a pretty popular park in the United States? Well, first of all, the drive to Mount Rushmore is absolutely beautiful. I can't remember the name of the road, but it's very famous. There's bumper stickers um, that go with it. You're driving up through these twisty mountainy forests with beautiful lakes and rivers. And so we could see Mount Rushmore in the distance and we were getting very excited and pointing at it. And, um, and so that was just amazing. And then we arrived and they have this really elaborate parking structure to get there. And then I have to say, once you get there, it's a little smaller than you expect, um, especially seeing it from afar. Uh, but it was still really amazing to see that that people must have been hanging there and to carve those faces in. Um, and then it, there's a beautiful walk up um, from the parking area up to the mountain. It's just pretty spectacular. Wow, that sounds just beautiful. Okay, I have some really cool comments and questions for you that I want to get to. I know our time is kind of running out, but hopefully we can answer some of them. Um, so one of them is, uh, what are the rules and regulations about camping in the United States? Um, is there a place that you kind of look at before you go? That's a really good question. Um, so that, I think that um, shows a big difference between the western part of the U.S. and the um, eastern part. When we left Michigan, we had to be really careful to kind of research different camping areas. Um, there's a lot of camping areas, but you have to make sure to find them. Some of them you have to reserve ahead of time. Um, and some of them, it's just whoever gets there first can have them. But we notice as we move west, um, there's just a lot less people and a lot just more open country. Um, in the western part, there's a lot of lands that are just owned by the government and you can camp 
anywhere you like. Um, so we also had a really nice app um, that's uh, different people who've done experiences like ours share um, places that they found were good places to um, park or camp. But um, yeah, this picture you're looking at, actually my sister did a really good job. She met up with us at a um, campground in Washington State and this was the, um, this is what we could see from our tent. So that was pretty amazing place. That is really cool. Okay, so we have um, Karima Briskri, who is watching with the students too, and, um, and is asking, what language do you speak apart from English? Uh, well, English is definitely my best language. Um, I studied French in high school and college, and so I'm decent at reading it, um, but I never really got a chance to practice it, so my speaking and listening isn't so great. Uh, I did have pretty good Korean when I lived in Korea, but I haven't practiced it uh, very much. And then I have survival level of a mix of Uzbek and Russian. So if I go to, um, to Central Asia, I can do things like get taxis and order food in restaurants and greet people as well. Very nice. So I don't know if this is a personal question, but I think it's a really beautiful question. Somebody saying, Cyrus Akbari is saying, uh, who chose your name because Mina is uh, Persian and is beautiful um, and um, they want to know who chose your name. Ah, that's a great question and actually the first Mina I ever met um, aside from myself was Persian. Um, it's interesting because it's a name in many many cultures. My father chose my name. Um, my father is American. My mother's Korean. It's a Korean name. My mother wanted to name me Melissa, but my father really wanted me to have a Korean name. And so they compromised on Melissa or on Mina. And, but I found out since it's a Japanese name, it's a Persian name. Um, in Arabic, it means Marina. Um, and it's just either a word or a name in a lot of different cultures. So I think it's very international. Okay, this is gonna be the last question because we already went um, uh, over our time and we wanna thank you for for um, giving us your time this morning. Um, so are you planning to write a book? This is a question from Karima as well. Are you planning to write a book about your travel experience? That sounds like a good idea. It is a good idea and I definitely should. I kept some journaling entries in my diary and um, recorded a lot of stuff on Facebook with photos. I hope to. I have lots of projects, but it is an excellent idea. And in a perfect world, I will. <laughs> <laughs> I am, that's true. Okay, this is really, really my last question. If you have to recommend three states, this is uh, things are, Zui. If you have to recommend three states to visit um, to a foreigner, what would they be? So if somebody wants to come to the states, your three top states that they should visit. My favorite state is Montana now because of natural beauty. It might be boring to a foreigner, but you could ride horses and visit national parks. But I think probably if I were coming for another country, I would wanna also go to New York because of New York City, but also it has a lot of beauty. And probably California for similar reasons. Well, thank you so much, Mina, for your time this morning, for sharing your story with us. We apologize for the technical difficulties today. But we are glad that you are here and that you were able to stay a little longer. We hope that you continue to share your ideas and thoughts through our social media pages. Um, you can check out our Facebook page. You can check out our YouTube channel and our website, AmericanEnglish.state.gov. If you want to ask more questions, please put them in the comments box and we'll try to get them um, you know, to those questions at some point today. But Thank you so much, Mina, again, for joining us this morning. Thank you. It's so great to have you here, and hopefully you'll be um, safe without too much rain this afternoon. And thanks again, everyone, for joining us. We look forward to seeing you again in a couple of weeks for our next session of Faces and Places across the United States. We encourage you to continue to engage with our community virtually like you are today. And, uh, we wanna see you again soon. Thank you, bye everybody. Thanks for watching.